is a man you already all know very well. It's Ed Parker. Evening, Ed. Good evening. How are you? Fine, thank you. Uh, the interview with Ed this evening, I'm not going to concentrate so much on Ed's uh, relationship to Elvis because that's been, I think, very well covered by Keith and Ed in their previous interview. I'd really like to ask you, Ed, more a couple of questions about yourself. Uh, I know you're um, a member of the Mormon Church. Yes, I uh-huh. Were you actually born into a Mormon family? Or yes, are you I a convert- was. You were born into a mm-hmm. Mormon family. And could you uh, just let everybody know a little bit about perhaps the, the tenets of the Mormon faith? Well, first of all, <clears throat> many feel that we're, we're not Christians, but the church is really called the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day, Latter-day Saints. So that in itself tells you that. Sure, of course Christian. it does. Uh, what it is, it's, uh, well, we believe in not only doing work for that which has to be done in this earth and with this earthly body, but I think our church is unique from the standpoint that we also have ordinances that have to be done for the dead mm-hmm. by the living. Now, this is done vicariously. By that I mean, although we do it for those on the other side, they still have the choice of deciding whether they accept or reject that which we do for them because they're only, uh, they're, you know, like I said, there's certain ordinances that have to be done in the mortal body. Uh-huh. And so that's why it's done. <clears throat> and uh, I think that makes it unique. However, many feel that we have the Book of Mormon and that this is a supplement, uh, this is a, our Bible. It is not, it is an additional or supplement to the Bible. Uh, we do believe the Bible to be as uh, true as far as it is, as it is interpreted correctly. But the Book of Mormon is more or less of the history of the American Indians as to who they were, where they came from, and some of the things they went through when the church was among them. I see. see. One of the things which has always impressed me in my obviously limited knowledge about the Mormon faith is the fact that the missionary spirit is very strong. Uh, and you have a, a great number of young Mormon men out in the world as missionaries. Did you yourself ever serve as a missionary? No, no my son has, but I, I was never. Uh-huh. It, it's not compulsory? No, it's not compulsory. And uh, there are a lot of the kids that they go out now. When they go out, the church does not pay, except for, for the transportation to and from. That's the only thing the church pays. Other than that, it's the family who pays mm-hmm. for the child or Oh, I see. So it's self, uh, they, they have to finance themselves. They, don't, they don't receive anything from the church no. at all. Oh, that's very impressive. Uh, le- well, there, there, I mm. take that back in that there is a fund within each ward. That means the particular church that the, the, the uh, missionary might have gone to, they may donate on occasion. Yeah, some fund. but he has to obviously provide. That's right. The uh, family uh, provides it in uh, the main. Now, I believe also, Ed, that one of the tenets of the Mormon faith is that the human body is a, 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 a shrine of the Holy Ghost or of it's the Holy temple. Spirit temple, mm-hmm. and you mustn't defile it by alcohol, yes. but not even tea or coffee, I believe. Because of the caffeine content. content. That's in it. Well, that's right. Well, we, I mean, this is really a, a, a getting away. It's a little bit more lighthearted. Since you were born into the Mormon faith, we believe now in the States that they're producing Coca-Cola, which is caffeine-free. Have you, in fact, tried Coca-Cola since this new... No, I haven't. Uh, I, I was just wondering how, what would be your reaction. Be the first time I'd ever asked anybody of your age who'd tasted Coke for the first time, you see. What oh, it was no, like. I, listen, before I knew the fact that the church was against Coca-Cola, I was a Coca-Cola addict. <laughs> oh, well, I thought I was going to be the first American no. ever who wasn't no, a no, Coca-Cola no. fan. Oh, no, but I, you know, I, I didn't know that the church was against it, but uh, they, they, you know... Again, they tell you of the fact that it has the contents, but the, the, it's not mandatory. They'd rather you not. No, but it, it, it's more tea. It's more. It is the caffeine content in the drinks, like tea and coffee, which mm-hmm. preclude yeah, your. Yeah, no, I'm just. I saw the other day passing one of your uh, uh, race horse. Uh, oh, the the uh, yeah the um, race horses. Yeah, they had Dr Pepper. Now I understand Dr Pepper has more caffeine in it than the Coca Cola has. I can quite believe it, Ed. I'm not a Dr Pepper fan myself. I never. I'm sorry it's come over to me. It's not one of America's yeah. well, in- listen, exports. I, I, I think, I I think it, it tastes like uh, uh, <laughs> medicine to me. You know, me, prune, with prune juice. Me too. Another fact, though, Ed. Um, everybody who watches this station knows that I'm a trivia buff. I believe you're one of the. You you live on Hawaii. 
Do you not? No, I, you don't I, know that you were born on Hawaii. Born and raised in Hawaii. Hawaii. But you were you were on Hawaii when Pearl Harbor was bombed, That's I believe. That's correct. I got to see the bombing. You actually saw the yes. bombing, did you? Yes, I lived three miles from Pearl. I was up on my roof and I was a witness to the entire scene. That's amazing. Can you recall a lot of it? You can still recall it. Oh, yes. Wouldn't you be able to recall oh, right. at the age of 11 or 11 and a half, I think you Oh would. my goodness. That's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it's almost like meeting a bit of history in the making there. Yeah, yes, it is, uh, really. that's correct. Uh, and it was, it was quite a sight. Fortunately for us, they had no troop ships that came in. Had they any troop ships, they yeah. would have taken it all. That's right. And world history might have taken it. And very the only one, course. the one and only dogfight that I saw was with a P40 and a, and a Zero. It was conducted right above the house. My goodness. Quite an experience. Yeah, I'm sure it was. How about now your own career now, Ed? Uh, you're uh, you're very heavily involved in film still, are you? Yes, mm -hmm. I, I am. I uh, still have my schools and affiliates all over the world. Yeah. That's my mainstay of income. Yeah. You know, I think that's important. But I also have uh, irons in the fire for films. I yeah. love doing films, only from the standpoint that I think people get to know what the philosophies are a lot better if you can interject it in the script. You know? So I'm working now with Blake Edwards. We're contemplating I'm not doing it anymore. Peter Sellers type no. films, but we're, we're contemplating doing a couple of martial art films. Oh, I was going to ask you about that, Ed. Uh, as you are obviously a, a, an exponent of, I'm not quite sure which school of. Kempo is a system I teach, but it's, uh, you know, again, the system that I've developed is my own system. Europe. And many have said, well, how can you develop your own system? Well, uh, I'd have to take about three months to tell you. Sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure, I'm sure. But the point is, there are a lot of concepts and principles that other systems do not employ that makes what I have different. But to give a, a, a better analogy f for you to have a better understanding, if I was to teach you the alphabet from A to G, yeah, okay, and the principles of rearranging them so that you can formulate words, uh -huh. There's a lot, a lot of words that you could formulate just with A to G, especially when you're allowed to use each of the, those alphabets more than once. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like uh, if you were to use it more than once, you could come up with such words as deed, which has two Ds on each end and two E's in the middle uh, from that standpoint. But I discovered that there are a lot of alphabets of motion that was missing in many of the other styles. Uh, so yeah. now I think I have the completed alphabet of motion, mm -hmm. whereby I've extended it beyond A to G. I see. And as a result, now I can, you know, interrelate other uh, of the alphabets and come up with better words. I see. Yeah. It's that, that's, that's, sophisticated. It's a very good analogy you've drawn. And what is your opinion of the martial arts films which have been produced and released up to now? I'm talking about the Bruce well, Lee and the Chinese, uh, the Hong Kong. Bruce Lee was, uh, Bruce Lee, uh, was excellent. Mm -hmm. and, uh, now, when I say that, I say that from from experience, because Bruce lived with me when he's broke down and out, and I was the one instrumental in getting him his job as Cato, and from that point, he took off. I saw in him a quality that I felt if it was on screen, he would be a big asset to those of us in the martial art fields in creating interest, mm -hmm. and that he did. He did, sir. Oh, didn't yeah, he? very much so. I believe Bruce was a fifth dan, wasn't he? Uh, Bruce had no degrees. Didn't he have any no, at all? None at all, but he was excellent. He was absolutely See, excellent. See, pound for pound, he was the best in terms of the oriental martial arts. Just like in the boxing world, pound for pound, they say Sugar Ray Robinson was perhaps the best. That's right. But then, too, you know, if you were to pit him against Joe Lewis of yesteryear, yeah. Uh, both being in their prime, I would put my money on Joe Lewis because he was bigger, that's stronger, right. and when he hit, you know. A good big and will always beat a good little one. That's, that's what they that's say, that's isn't it? That's that's yeah. Exactly. So weight, size, and strength definitely has a bearing. I see. Well, look, at the only thing, these interviews, I've got to come to them because you have clips of Elvis to show. Oh, certainly, that's but right. But I'd like to say anyway, thanks very much for coming along here. I mean, I know there have been so many calls on your time whilst you've been over here. But it's, well, my it's time is your time. What am I going to do, just sit down and, and look at... No. No, no, I, I know, but it's very I'm kind. I'm happy to do it. I, when I sit down with the fans, I don't say, gee, how long is the line, gee, how many more people? <laughs> I, I don't even think that at all. No. I sign until I run out of people. Well, that really, it's really nice to meet somebody who does that. Anyway, look, I'll say to, on behalf of everybody, thanks for coming along 
to the TV studios. Thanks for coming over to England and thanks for being such a just generally such a, a great sport and for doing yeah, it. You're a great fan club. What else can you expect? <laughs> <All right. laughs>